Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering circuit analysis. We're going to tackle this inverting op amp problem, which looks sort of similar to the last problem, but also in many ways quite different. Let's take a look at what this circuit is telling us. First of all, we have an input source that's 250 millivolts. That's a constant DC source. So the input is being driven through a resistor, but notice we have another resistor kind of uh, going off to ground as part of the input resistance network. Think of it that way. We also have a feedback resistor, but we have this kind of weird thing going on in the feedback network. We'll talk about a little more about that in just a second. Uh, and then we have an output resistor, and the output voltage is tapped off of that. Um, so notice, though, that this part of the circuit looks kind of similar to what we did in the last section. It's not the same, but kind of similar. Basically, what we have is we have a fixed resistor, 12,000 ohms. And then we have this side of the resistor connected kind of in a variable way. You can kind of move this thing left and right um, across a 50 kilo ohm resistor. Now, if the, if the knob, if you think of it as a knob, is turned all the way to the right, then the, the arrow is all the way to the end of this 50,000 ohms. In that case, the feedback resistance would be 12,000 ohms plus the entire 50,000 ohms uh, in series with one another. Now, there's one thing really important for you to notice. Uh, remember I told you in the last section, be careful if you have weird networks going on up here, it might be difficult to just use your regular you know, inverting op amp um, gain equation because you need to have the feedback resistance and the input resistance. This is the feedback resistance. There's a critical difference in this problem compared to the last problem. If you go back to the last problem, you'll see that whenever we did this thing, it was drawn with one side of this resistor grounded. That means that in the other problem, one side of this resistor here, the one that had the variable knob, was tied to ground, which means it's physically connected to all of these other ground symbols, basically. And that very much complicated the feedback resistor. So we couldn't, in the previous problem, look at the feedback resistor and quickly calculate a, um, a value, at least with that, without a bunch of manipulation. So we, we did that problem a totally different way. We, we approached it with node voltage equations, basically. This one's different. Notice that this side of the resistor is just floating. It's an unconnected terminal. There's no ground symbol here. So this is not connected here. It's not connected here. This is literally floating. It's like literally one half of a resistor that's floating. So in the case where the knob is over here, then it's 12,000 plus 50,000 in direct series with it. That would be your feedback resistor. Very easy to read it. If you turn the knob the other way so that this arrow goes all the way over here, then it would just be 12,000 plus zero because you'd be bypassing the resistor. So in both cases, you turn the knob left and right, uh, either you're going, you're going to take a fraction of this in series with that. And it's very easy to see that. It's very easy to calculate that feedback resistance. So we're going to be able to do that in this problem compared to the last problem. It's all due to this that we just discussed.